Initially anonymous former teammate of Kevin Durant, later revealed to be Mike James, just took a brutal shot at Stephen Curry. I'm not sure why a player in the Euro League is talking like this, but he dished out the type of cheap shot in which Steph has gotten used to taking. While Draymond Green's the Warriors' most valuable assist guy and defender when he's out there, he has a career record of 33 wins and 62 losses without Curry. Steph's record without Draymond is 37 wins and 19 losses. The most important player to the Dubs dynasty continues to get trash-talked despite being the driving factor behind his team winning half of the available titles since 2014-15. Meanwhile, not enough people are giving credit to the Dubs for an A-grade offseason. The front office has a history of giving contract extensions to players with one year left on their deal, so because Draymond and Clay have two years remaining, Bob Myers and Joe Lacob have held firm. However, like Steph, their signings of Jamichael Green and a player heavily broken down in my last video, Dante DiVincenzo, are also getting a taste of the haterade from casuals. Who have been the most garbage talking heads downplaying Golden State's ring? Who doesn't get enough respect on the dubs? Stay tuned to find out. Before continuing, according to YouTube's analytics, only 13.9% of you watching right now are subscribed, so press the box and turn on notifications if you haven't already. Also leave a like on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. Make sure you're following me on Instagram at dflowhoops. Now into the content. After the Golden State Warriors threw yet another championship parade in the Bay Area, I've seen three responses from the general public. You have people like Nick Wright, who've actually apologized for trash talking. It's over for them now. We will never see Steph in another NBA Finals, ever. They, they have no path forward. I got that one wrong, and I give Wiggins credit. You've got Dominique Foxworth, who continues to make the zero over his eye as iconic as Curry's night-night celebration. How many more championships do you believe uh, Steph Curry and the Warriors will win? So I'll answer it with all of them. <laughs> Double zeros. Back to being genuine, though. And the third response I've seen to the Warriors' fourth championship in eight seasons has been not even jokingly disrespect like Dominique's was, but straight up belligerent, out of place nonsense. Mike James portrayed that third reaction by saying as followed yesterday on the Player's Choice podcast, Steph, how he plays and how he gets stuff off, it's just one dimensional at times. He's not the primary ball handler a lot, and for a point guard, that kind of bothers me, end quote. First things first, let's set that attempted narrative straight. Curry adding on two to three pounds of muscle last offseason improved his already underrated finishing. From three to ten feet, Steph shot a career high 53% from the field. In terms of his passing, Curry's off the ball so much like James is alluding to, because if Mike isn't watching, the man's getting blitzes, traps, and or box and ones thrown at him on a possession to possession basis. Therefore, almost all of Steph's passes are out of double teams, which greatly brings down his assist average and ability to set up his teammates with an individual pass. But by using the gravity drawn by those aforementioned defensive coverages, instead of shying away like the former NBA player Mike James may have, Steph's never stopping, unique, and utterly brilliant movement working off pin downs has a way of dictating the Warriors' flow. For that reason, I'll say that Steph's playmaking, like his finishing around the bucket, is underrated. But this shouldn't even be a discussion. Let's not forget who we're talking about here. In addition to being the only player of all time to have won Finals MVP, League MVP, Conference Finals MVP, and All-Star Game MVP, along with having a Steals Championship, two Scoring Championships, eight All-NBA appearances, not to mention four rings, plus being the leader in all-time three-pointers made, this next bit of information means even more. Steph's career record in the postseason is 93-41, and 41, a 69.4% winning percentage. Those playoff games saw him average 26.6 points per game on a shooting line of 45-40-90, while also averaging 5.4 rebounds, 6.2 assists, and 1.6 steals. We'll get right back to Curry, but like Mike, another James and LeBron, has been somewhat widely regarded by the modern-day NBA fan as the greatest player of all time. Michael Jordan deserves to be known as number one as long as he has two more rings, in my humble opinion. Hot takes aside, despite having an equal amount of rings as LBJ, Steph is never included in the GOAT discussion. It's almost as if Durant joining tarnished his legacy. But after Kevin not only lost but was swept in the first round, to a Celtic team Steph beat three rounds later in six games, 
it should be obvious who was the most important player to the Warriors. Draymond Green said on his podcast that Curry's shooting off the dribble was developing during the KD years, which is a disrespectful take. It was always a debate between who was better during the Durant years, but the results of 2022's playoffs precisely display the biggest alpha male and main catalyst to the organization winning four titles. Curry's not an all-NBA defender, which he receives a ton of flack for. However, he is above average defensively, as his lateral quickness and basketball IQ allow him to make solid rotations. Combined with his not just league best, but landscape shifting offensive impact, Steph's defense is more than stable. That's why it's confusing to me why people don't give Curry more respect in terms of his all-time ranking. It's also confusing that Warrior casual fans have labeled the second green on the squad in Jamichael a lackluster free agency pickup. Sure, he was the second choice to the flashier available guys on the market like PJ Tucker or even the now member of the Toronto Raptors Otto Porter Jr., but Jamichael's floor spacing and screen setting got heavily undervalued entering 2022's offseason, given he was coming off a down year shooting the rock. You likely don't know this, but back in the bubble for the Clippers, Jamichael knocked down a blazing 52% of his deep range bombs, giving him the 8th best 3 point percentage among all players in the seeding games. You can also see Green's not as Mike James would say, one dimensional after he catches this bounce pass from Facundo Campazzo and gives Devin Vessel a Kodak moment, putting the young San Antonio spur on a poster. In Jamichael, you're looking at a player who as a stretch big, with a large chunk of his shot attempts coming from the mid-range or beyond the arc, has only failed to shoot 46% from the field in one season, which was in 2019-20. Green's due for a bounce back season after making just 26.6% of his two attempted triples per night in the 21-22 campaign, because for his career, Jamichael shoots 10% better than that from deep. Overall, the stretch big's also an excellent screen setter, a decent rebounder, and his seven years of pro experience should help smooth things out in the locker room. Just because he's not a big name yet, don't doubt what the Warriors player development staff can do for so-called no-name players. Kevon Looney's one of those so-called no-name players, but lest we forget, the man who's going to give the returning James Wiseman some tough internal competition this upcoming season had the biggest game of his life when the Warriors needed him most. Game 6 of the second round against Memphis was an outing where the Warriors shot under 40% from the field as a team, which is why Looney snagging a vicious 11 offensive rebounds to go along with 11 boards on the other end was one of the driving factors which closed out the Grizzlies in 6. This was never brought up in the mainstream media, or anywhere really, so I thought it was necessary to also state that in the conference finals, a round after the Memphis series, Kavon averaged a clean double-double, posting 10.6 points and rebounds over a five-game tilt against Dallas. Game two of the conference finals saw Kavon score a career-high 21 points and make 10 of his 14 attempts from the field. The Mavericks had no answer for him all series, as Loon absolutely owned the glass and the paint, in a redraft of the 2015 class, Kavon would undoubtedly go in the top 10, when in reality, the Warriors stole him 7 years ago at pick number 30. It's unbelievable that such a quality 2-way 5-man fell to the very last selection of the first round that year. But in your opinion, which Warrior player receives the most unnecessary disrespect? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shoutout and the top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by September 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Last video I asked, can Klay Thompson become an all-NBA player again? Today's speaks winner is Dylan Popoff, who says 1,000%. However, I feel their support around him is much better than it was before he got hurt. He may not need to be the Klay he used to be, as we all saw they won the chip without him being all the way back, but I think for sure we will see flashes this season where he just takes over a game offensively like he has in the past, and that makes them even scarier as a team. You tell the story in Community Speaks, so leave your take.